Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Tom Jensen. We continue our series of fishing reports this week. We visit with Jeff Hendrickson. Jeff is the fishery supervisor in the Southwest District. Jeff, uh, you guys had a pretty early spring out here, Dickinson, and of course in the Southwest. Is that affecting your fishing patterns from people? Are they getting a jump on anything? Yeah, there's a few people getting a jump on things, getting out with open water. You know, people have been able to get out and try a little shore fishing mostly. Sure, cabin fever and, yeah. and such. You don't have a whole lot of big water bodies in your district. You do have a lot of medium-sized lakes, though, that are, that are really some gems. Yeah, yeah, Lake Chida is a very good fishery for a lot of different species. Um, Patterson Lake here now is very good for panfish and, and walleye and things like that. Okay. You've uh, also got some very small lakes that are uh, providing some great fishing opportunities too that are kind of hidden away. Oh yeah, Indian Creek is one that stands out. You know, that's uh, been a really good winter ice fishing lake and, and in the summer too lately. Okay. Yeah. You have the luxury, Jeff, of having a very wide variety of fish in your district. I want to talk about them one by one. Let's start with walleye. Okay, walleye, you're mostly looking at Lake Chida. Um, Patterson Lake now is getting a really nice walleye population going. Um, Bowman Haley, of course, those are the big three. Those yeah. have walleye fishing in them all the time. Bowman Haley's had the reputation for having some trophy size fish. Oh uh, yeah. yeah, actually all of our lakes, except for Patterson now. You know, the walleye in Patterson are only about four years old now. Mm -hmm. But uh, after since we eradicated it in 2010, that's as old as walleye as we got, but uh, Lake Chida, some large walleye there. Um, probably the best, as far as size goes, we have two lakes, um, North Lemon Lake and Indian Creek Dam. Both have very large walleye. Not a lot of walleye, but there's some very large old walleyes in them. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Northerns. Okay, uh, Northerns, we have several lakes that are good. Again, Chida, uh, Patterson, Bowman Haley all have Northerns in them. Uh, Gascoigne down in Bowman County, that's a good northern lake. Larson Lake has pretty decent northerns in it. Um, and they, you know, we don't get the big size like they do on the Missouri River or anything, but sure. But there's, uh, they're abundant and they're easy to catch. And they're fun to catch too. Oh, yeah, Ooh. yeah. You uh, have in your district, Jeff, some of the only uh, trout lakes in the state. You've got some yeah. really good trout fishing and some scenic trout fishing in some of these places. Oh yeah, you know, the the best one that comes to mind is Davis Dam down in, you know, in Slope County. It's really a nice day trip. You're gonna go down there, you wanna catch some trout, that's a good place to go. Um, and, you know, Raleigh Reservoir, actually Raleigh Reservoir, we kind of quit stocking trout in because we got abundant northerns in there now. Um, but Sheep Creek, Mott Watershed, you name it, a lot of these city ponds, you know, in the Southwest have trout in them. Sure. You know, we're putting trout every year and we get a lot of fishing for trout. Providing some great yeah. fishing opportunities. You mentioned that you do a lot of uh, winter fishing out here. There's a lot of good ice fishing opportunities. And that brings to mind, of course, perch, Yeah. panfish. Yeah. Uh, can we go through those? Yeah, perch uh, fishing, um, actually it doesn't really relate to abundance too much, but uh, Spring Lake and Odlin Dam were and Indian Creek per perch are probably r very abundant right now in those lakes. And ice fishing was pretty good this year at Odland Dam and Indian Creek. The way perch. the weather is today, a person could actually get out and do some ice fishing here yeah. before long if the lakes refreeze. <laughs> Jeff, your district uh, has a reputation for having a few, well, let's call them sleeper lakes. They're lakes yeah. that are overlooked. They don't get fished very hard and uh, they've got some really great fishing opportunities. Oh yeah, uh, you know, yeah, I already mentioned one Indian Creek a few times. That, right. That, of course, a lot of people in the Southwest know about it, but got some very large walleye, some nice perch in it now. Odlin Dam, they they caught some very nice perch in Odlin Dam this winter, and uh, fishing there has been pretty good lately. Little lakes like Mott Watershed, right in the town of Mott, and not that many people know about it. Of course, we just started that lake again about five years ago. It was drawn down for SOL work and the drought. But uh, we bluegill and bass and trout, and we get some very large trout in Mott Watershed. That's a kind of a sleeper lake. 
I'm going to put you on the spot here again, Jeff, like I do with all of the fishery supervisors. If you could take a day off, grab the family, go to any lake in your district and go fishing, where would you go and what would you do? Well, I might, right now I might go down and try Indian Creek. I think there's, like I mentioned earlier, a very large walleye in there. In fact, I missed a very large one there this winter. I had one on and I lost it, but, but uh, so I'm kind of hooked on that lake right You're now. You're still looking for <laughs> that one yeah, big one. <laughs> grumpy old man syndrome. <laughs> but, but yeah, that's a, that would be one place I would go and I would try to catch a walleye probably. Great. Jeff, thanks. You're welcome. Jason Lee joins us now. Jason is the fishery supervisor for the North Central District. Jason, you've got quite a few very unique fisheries in your district. Yeah, we do have some uh, unique fisheries. Uh, uh, up in the Turtle Mountains, we've got Lake Metagoshi, which is a very different setting than most of our lakes. Uh, obviously a different lake with a lot of trees around it and uh, fairly deep, and, and that fishery is doing really well right now. Uh, we've got good number of uh, large bluegill in there, probably the best bluegill lake in the district. Uh, another one that's a little bit different is Nelson Lake down by center. Uh, that's on a, has a power plant on the lake so the water stays warm year round and really provides excellent habitat for largemouth bass and bluegill and, and crappies. So. And then we've got, you know, scattered walleye lakes throughout the district and uh, a bunch of perch fisheries and yeah, so we've got a variety of different lakes. Yeah probably the jewel of your district, I guess at least as far as fishing goes, is right behind us, Lake Audubon. Yeah, that's right. That uh, probably receives the most fishing pressure in the, the district that I work in. Uh, it's a busy place this winter. Uh, with the open winter, not much snow. Access was good and folks were out, able to get out here and enjoy ice fishing on Lake Audubon. Uh, the walleye fishery is in good shape. Uh, in 2011, we had a really good year class. Uh, good numbers of those fish, they're the 12 to 14 inches, so I think they'll provide a lot of action this summer, as well as some larger fish in the system too, so it's, right. it's looking good. Audubon is a good size lake. You also have some smaller uh, type of lakes that are great fisheries. We do, yeah. Uh, a few of those smaller ones, uh, like for example, trout lakes, strawberry lake up in the Turtle Mountains, gets stocked annually with rainbow trout, uh, Velva Sportsman's Pond, there's another smaller lake that, uh, that we stock with uh, trout, Lightning Lake down by Turtle Lake receives trout each year. So yeah, we've got quite the variety. Right. Now you manage the Garrison Diversion string of lakes mm -hmm. in your district as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, the Canal Lakes are, are doing pretty well for walleye right now. Uh, good numbers of uh, smaller fish, not a lot of, large, a lot of large, large walleye in there, but uh, pike are doing well in the Canal Lakes right now. Uh, with the water being higher and, and flooding some cattail, uh, cattails and vegetation, uh, we've seen some good pike reproduction in the canal system in the last couple of years. So. You've mentioned four or five different species of fish and that's the uniqueness of your district is that you do have a lot of species. Let's go through them one by one, start with walleyes. Sure, uh, of course uh, Lake Audubon for walleyes is our, our most popular walleye fishery. Uh, Lake Metagoshi's uh, got a good walleye population right now. Buffalo Lodge up by Granville uh, would be another one that, that would be good. Uh, Lake Brecken and Lake Holmes, uh, Crooked Lake all have decent numbers of walleyes. South Hofer Lake is another one that's uh, doing well right now. Um, so yeah, we've got, got a bunch of walleye lakes scattered throughout the district. Seems like every lake in North Dakota has a healthy northern population and you have some of the best. We do, yeah. Buffalo Lodge right now is, uh, is doing really well for pike. That received a lot of uh, pike pressure this winter, a lot of spearing going on up there. Uh, lake Metagoshi again, good numbers of pike with some bigger fish in there. Uh, Brush Lake, good numbers of pike. Uh, Crooked Lake, yeah, there's, there's pike scattered throughout the district. You also have some monster muskies in your district and some of the lakes that you manage, including Audubon and, uh, and several others. Yeah, uh, they aren't yet quite monsters yet <laughs> in Audubon. This will be our fifth year we've stocked tiger muskies in Audubon. So uh, some of those initial stockings will be larger fish. And, and I've heard reports of uh, a few being caught. Not big numbers yet. We've stocked fairly conservative numbers, anywhere from 
2,000 to 5,000 a year is what we've been putting in, but, uh, but we've got Cisco in the lake as a forage fish for those muskies and they provide a good size fish that will make those muskies grow to a large size. So we're hopeful uh, the muskies do okay in Audubon. And then the canal lakes get stocked with uh, muskies every year or when they're available. And uh, not big numbers there either, but uh, every once in a while you hear of a big fish and, and there's a potential for another really big muskie to come out of that canal system at some point. So Let's talk about panfish for a minute. And by panfish, I mean, of course, you mentioned bluegills in mm -hmm. Matagoshi, but you also have some really good perch and crappie lakes. Yeah. Uh, as far as crappie, I would say right now Nelson Lake is probably our best crappie as far as size. Uh, good numbers of both big uh, black and white crappie in Nelson Lake. Uh, Harmony Lake, north of... Uh, uh, Hazen has a, a decent number of bluegill in it right now. That's on a good one to go check out. They aren't real big, but there's good numbers in there. So yeah, and then perch all over. Uh, we've, <laughs> we've been fairly aggressive the last few years in trying to get some new perch lakes going. Uh, a lot of water in the district with abundant rain and snow and uh, and we've had some pretty good success with some of those perch lakes. I would guess that you're fairly successful on these perch projects as you have some really good winter fishing opportunities in your district. We do, yeah. yeah. And folks are kind of figuring out where some of those perch lakes are. And uh, I always advise anglers to keep an eye on their stocking records and, and see where we put perch in some of these lakes and, and check them out. And, yeah. All right, I'm going to ask you the same question I ask all the rest of the fishery supervisors. If you could take a day off, not necessarily today as it's a little windy, but uh, if you could take a day off, take the family, go fishing in your district for any species, what would you do and where would you go? You know, it's been quite a while since I've fished out of a boat, so I think I would probably head down to Nelson Lake and, and try and catch some largemouth bass and crappies down there. So I think that's where I'd go. All right, Jason, thanks. You bet. For a complete list of fishable lakes in North Dakota and a list of boat ramps, plus stocking reports and lots of other useful information, check out the March-April edition of North Dakota Outdoors magazine. It has directions to a lake you might want to check out, whether or not the lake has public access, and also what species exist in the lake. The information is also available on the Game & Fish website along with topographical maps of your favorite lake. The website address is gf.nd.gov. For Jeff Hendrickson, for Jason Lee, and the rest of the staff here at North Dakota Game & Fish, thanks for joining us for Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.